wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. Welcome to our second session of webinar series, Captain of Industry, organized by Faculty of Engineering UTM. We are welcome to our UTM staff to attend and um, to attend our session, to attend our webinar today, and also our students. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today we are streaming live from Facebook Faculty of Engineering UTM. With us today, yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Engineer Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah, Group Managing Director and Group CEO, Serba Dynamic Holdings Berhad. And um, with um, his topic for today, Pride of Being a UTM Graduate. Thank you, Dato, um, for your time, for your, for your precious, time, precious time with us. And without further ado, I would like to invite Yang Berbahagi Dato Dekan for our next agenda. And before that, please like, comment and share our Facebook live streaming for today. Over to you, Dato. Uh, thank you, Murni. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, to our Honorable Speaker Dato uh, Karim uh, and all of you joining us live from Facebook Faculty of Engineering UTM. Uh, indeed, we are honored today uh, to have someone with vast experience in industry, about close to 30 years in industry, as our speaker for the Captains of Industry webinar series. Uh, a brief introduction about our esteemed speaker today. Dato Karim is the Group Managing Director and Group Chief Executive Officer of Serba Dynamic Holdings Berhad. He holds a Bachelor in Mechanical Engineering from University Technology Malaysia. He obtained an Honorary PhD in Industrial Engineering from Inter-American University USA in 2009 and a PhD in Entrepreneurship from Golden State University USA in 2012. He is a member of the Institution of Engineers Malaysia since 1994 a registered member of the Board of Engineers Malaysia since 1996 and a member of the Asian Federation of Engineering Organizations since 2002. Dato Karim's achievements are evidenced by the various recognitions and awards of which among others include the Golden Eagle Award 2015, Top 3 Eminent Eagle for Malaysia, International Finance Mag Magazine Awards 2015, Best Investor Relations and Best Corporate Governance, the Brand Laureate SME's Best Brands Award, President's Award Services 2016, the Green Era Award for Sustainability 2016, the President of Association Otherways Management and Consulting France, PGB CEO Contractors Forum Award 2016, Exceptional Performance in Maintenance Services, Gas Processing and Utilities, an excellent Secretariat Entrepreneur Award 2016, achievements for the category of Special Achiever. On 30th December 2016, Dato Karim led a team of experienced professionals successfully secured Securities Commission's approval to list the company on Bursa Malaysia Securities Berhad with market capitalization exceeding 2 billion, 2 billion ringgit. The listing ceremony of the IPO on 8th February 2017 was the largest in Malaysia for 2016. Datuk Karim, we are indeed honoured to have uh, you with us today. And without further ado, I'll call upon Datuk Karim to give his speech. Over to you, Datuk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good uh, afternoon. Uh, firstly, uh, Dato Professor Mama Rafiq, uh, thank you so much for your introduction. And uh, I'm honored to be invited uh, back uh, to UTM. And uh, of course, uh, when this uh, invitation was being uh, forwarded to me, I uh, stopped and gave a deep breath and uh, uh, was thinking. What am I to talk uh, today? And uh, of course, as what uh, 
Dr. Professor Rafiq has mentioned uh, the topic of uh, today is the pride of being a UCM uh, graduate. I would uh, just uh, uh, put forward some of my thoughts and my thinking uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes. And after that, I strongly believe that it will be more beneficial uh, if we open up for a question and answer. Uh, firstly, I choose this topic because uh, I strongly uh, believe that uh, UTM has given me a very uh, strong foundation and UTM has given me a very good uh, training ground uh, to transform into uh, what I have done after my graduation and of course uh, to what I've achieved uh, in my career over the past more than 30 years already. So I will uh, break out uh, the presentations into three parts. Uh, part, uh, the, first, the part one will be more of uh, uh, the experience that I've gone through uh, during my university life. And then uh, from there, I will uh, touch on the, the career uh, journey that I've gone through for the past uh, more than 30 years. And of course, I will end up with some forward-looking uh, look, uh, forward uh, statements uh, to share and also to open up for further debate uh, if there are uh, participants uh, who are having a different view of what I will be going to present. I was asked uh, to actually uh, combine the presentations in Bahasa Malaysia uh, together uh, if uh, some of the terminology cannot be changed, so I'm allowed to use uh, English. But I would like to actually uh, share a very unique experience. When I graduated from UTM, I could not really converse in English uh, very fluently because uh, for all my five years in uh, UTM, uh, I've been uh, trained uh, to speak in Bahasa Malaysia and in a lot of uh, events uh, is uh, convert in Bata Malaysia. So when I graduated and I entered into the career uh, world working for one of the Petronas subsidiary by the name of Liza Sinyamahat, I had difficulty to uh, put messages uh, through in between because everything is in uh, English. But uh, time goes by uh, because of the environment and it being forced to speak in English. So it's the other way around now. If I would uh, speak in Bahasa Malaysia, I would uh, sometimes uh, have difficulty and try to grab for a word to complete a sentence. Eh? So whatever it is, uh, I, I think I set this as a challenge and I will uh, try my very best uh, to put for the message uh, which I would like to uh, put forward to uh, this uh, afternoon. Firstly, I would uh, say that uh, when I enter a UTM, uh, kita uh, datang daripada suatu uh, tempat yang dikenali sebagai uh, Christian village. And uh, that place is uh, more or less uh, quite near uh, to the area which I work with after my graduation, which is uh, Bintulu. But to cut the short, uh, story short, I feel that uh, UTM has uh, given me a very good uh, training uh, education background from the following perspective. Number one, when I entered UTM, uh, there are a lot of things uh, which I thought is a purely technical engineering uh, university. But uh, of course, uh, there are layman talk who said UTM uh, uh, is also referring to Untuk Tuhan dan Manusia. And uh, I will say that uh, the Knight Chancellor pada masa itu, Tan Sri Aminuddin Arwah, uh, telah uh, meletakkan satu asas yang amat kukuh supaya pelajar-pelajar yang keluar daripada UTM ini bukanlah uh, sekadar uh, graduat uh, teknokrat 
tetapi mereka juga merupakan graduan uh, teknokrat yang mempunyai disiplin pendirian dan juga kepercayaan yang kuat uh, kepada konsep ubudiah kepada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is this is something which I will say that uh, I appreciate a lot because I was uh, feeling quite uh, frustrated uh, in the context that is allowable lah, kecuaan yang boleh dibenarkan ya. Sebab uh, rakan-rakan uh, saya uh, telah mendapat kelulusan dan uh, dapat melanjutkan pelajaran mereka ke universiti-universiti yang lebih ternama di seberang laut, overseas dan universiti. But uh, here I am, I was being accepted into UTM. But I will say now that I'm very, very pleased that I graduated from UTM. The reasons is, number one, what UTM has taught me is, uh, as a technocrat, you have a very uh, important responsibility to the creator. Uh, maknanya, kita mempunyai satu tanggungjawab yang amat besar kepada pencipta kita, iaitu dalam konteks orang yang mempercayai agama Islam, kepada Allah yang maha berkuasa. Dan juga uh, di dalam uh, pembelajaran di tahun pertama dan kedua, uh, telah ditetapkan satu asas uh, konsep uh, ibadah dalam Islam yang cukup uh, syumul, uh, a very holistic view of uh, Islam as a way of life and it uh, basically categorized it very nicely into pengamalan umumiah dan juga khususnya. So, it uh, basically struck my mind that uh, agama Islam ni memberikan suatu kelengkapan yang amat cantik bukan sekadar kita ni mendapat pahala jika kita mengerjakan kerja-kerja ataupun amal ibadat uh, fadu, uh, fadu Ain ataupun Fadu Cipaya tapi apa-apa pengamalan yang kita niatkan adalah atas dasar untuk mencari keredaan Allah ianya juga di Uh, terima sebagai ibadah so what it means here is 24-7 across the entire year of 365 days uh, is the concept understanding and the niat, the navaitu is uh, correct, then you will be blessed with everything which will be uh, given uh, certain uh, uh, contributions uh, or rewards from Allah in terms of uh, pahala. So, saya rasa uh, bahawa uh, ini merupakan suatu uh, pendapat yang cukup uh, menutup ke kalbu saya dan ianya menjadikan suatu uh, pengamalan sehingga kepada hari ini. Ya. Dan uh, kalau kita lihat uh, antara kata-kata daripada uh, Uh, pensyarah-pensyarah yang masih kuat uh, uh, pegangan dia adalah uh, pengamalan solat itu adalah sesuatu yang uh, wajib uh, sesiapa yang meninggalkan solat ini akan men, uh, menjatuhkan dan tahap uh, kekufuran dan amalan solat yang diterima hendaklah uh, mempunyai kekuatan inna solat tanha anil fasya iwa mungkar bahawa sebenarnya setiap solat itu akan mencegah uh, seseorang itu daripada uh, perbuatan uh, uh, fasya dan juga perbuatan yang uh, mungkar. Jadi uh, kata-kata begini dan pendidikan yang begitu kuat uh, menusuk di dalam uh, ingatan sehinggalah kepada hari ini dan ianya mempunyai suatu makna yang amat besar di dalam uh, the clinic development that I would like to share with everyone. And it is a universal acceptance regardless of what the community uh, comprises of, whether they are believer or non-believer. This uh, fundamentals has been uh, so attractive and has gained a lot of trust uh, from the investor which Cyberdynamic uh, has been uh, pursuing uh, for the past uh, few years. So I will touch on that uh, shortly. And uh, from other aspect, of course, uh, when he entered into third year until the fifth year, very much uh, focused into technical uh, knowledge, engineering knowledge, uh, practical, and so on. So, uh, yang, yang tu bagi saya uh, memang 
wujud uh, di semua universiti uh, regardless whether it is a uh, local university or overseas uh, university. So, apa yang orang kata UTM ni untuk Tuhan dan manusia ni ada kebenaran dia. Uh, isi kandungan pendidikan yang telah ia uh, kedepankan untuk setiap pelajar. And uh, I also would like to uh, share here that when I was in UTM, uh, after uh, college dan universiti masih berkuat kuasa, but again uh, during that time, uh, regardless of the implementation of AUKU, uh, the students are also still very active because uh, they still have the belief that uh, mahasiswa itu adalah juru bicara umat. That is the terminology used during that time. And uh, I was involved quite actively in quite a number of uh, students' activities. And I would say that uh, those activities are very beneficial to me because uh, it helps me to improve my communication capability with different uh, uh, strata of the community. And it also uh, builds a training ground to uh, practice the concept of planning merancang yeah? the planning ability is very very important and uh, the other uh, component which i really feel that has helped me a lot uh, from all these uh, student activities is the positioning strategy uh, that is required for every uh, leader yeah? whether it is uh, industrial leaders or whether it's a political leaders or whether it is a NGO leaders and so on and so forth. Positioning uh, strategy is very important and all these are being practiced uh, in real uh, practical sense uh, in uh, UTM. So here, 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 here am I when I've gone through all those uh, processes and now uh, after graduating uh, in 1989, then I uh, to a real uh, world that I'm facing. So part of it is what I mentioned just now, communications uh, in the uh, industry, uh, majority uh, is uh, conversed in English because it's a technical engineering environment and group that I'm uh, facing. And uh, of course, uh, uh, for the first uh, few months and so on, it's facing difficulty, but after that, uh, it's uh, coming to normal and uh, was able to uh, go on uh, to be able uh, to uh, interact and carry out all the necessary uh, things that is required. So when I left uh, UTM with the fundamentals that I've mentioned just now, uh, I joined Petronas and uh, worked with one of the subsidiary Petronas in Bintulu, uh, Sarawak. And I would say that uh, I was there for four and a half years. Then I decided to resign and set up uh, one of the Dynamic group today uh, by the name of Cyber Dynamic India Bahar. And uh, uh, why I left Petronas is again going back uh, to the reality that uh, I, I, I have uh, internal uh, habit or attitude that I would like to see uh, things in motion. Meaning to say that I learned so much uh, theory in the end and uh, talking about the fluid dynamics, fluid dynamics is a subject that uh, uh, everybody uh, is very afraid of, uh, together with uh, our beloved uh, lecturer, uh, Dr. Nujib, uh, Nujib uh, still masih ingat lagi nama dia, semua orang takut, because she, uh, he is very fierce, and uh, there's so much that we have learned. Uh, in terms of the theory and so on. This is a practical, practicality a part of it in the actual engineering industrial uh, application uh, was not being uh, appreciated or I, I, I can't uh, really implement uh, all those uh, uh, theories that I've learned in the MC. Uh, because uh, Petronas uh, is a uh, uh, national oil company and the caretaker of the petroleum uh, reserve in Malaysia. Though now it's, uh, there, there is some debate uh, from other states, uh, but uh, we are not going into that debate. And 
Uh, a lot of the things, uh, graduates, uh, engineers, and so on, uh, we will be involved in too much meeting, uh, planning, but not so much into the actual hands-on practical engineering of what uh, the uh, technicians and other contractors uh, at engineer levels and so on are doing. So because of that, uh, I uh, make a decision in a good way uh, to resign for Petrona and uh, uh, set up uh, this uh, server dynamic uh, group. So from 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 uh, a very young uh, uh, age of 28 years old, I started off my own uh, journey as an entrepreneur. And uh, of course, there are lots of uh, criticism, skepticism, and so on. But I would say that those are history already. And uh, uh, I was uh, taken back uh, uh, when I started the business because uh, one of the things is the local uh, industry uh, does not look highly onto uh, local uh, technical capabilities. Uh, I was uh, trained as an engineer uh, more on the uh, maintenance of uh, rotating equipment. So when we talk about maintenance of rotating equipment, it's talking about uh, uh, turbines, uh, the steam turbine, the gas turbine, turbo machinery, and uh, other uh, turbo uh, equipment, which are quite high tech in nature. So as a, as, as a local engineer, we set up a company claiming that we can do all these uh, uh, overhauls of uh, steam turbine and so on and so forth. It does not get the buy in. So it's very, very uh, tough. And I will say that uh, this is where uh, my experience uh, in students' activities uh, of, uh, I would say, the strategic uh, positioning, what needs to be done, uh, strategic uh, planning, uh, what needs to work out so that uh, we can uh, push ourselves uh, to be accepted by the targeted uh, customer that we are looking at. So the rest of history, I would say, uh, here we are, uh, we are, a company uh, today which is recognized not only domestic in Malaysia and uh, as a starting of uh, 2 billion market capitalizations uh, when first day we got listed onto the stock exchange of Bursa Malaysia. Uh, today uh, we have uh, approximately around uh, double up the market capitalization 5 billion in Malaysia. Uh, before the market collapse uh, we have uh, achieved up to something like 6 billion uh, more than 6 billion ringgit Malaysia market capitalization. I'm not here to uh, boost and uh, be proud of uh, those figures and so on. The point that I want to make here is uh, from a very humble beginning and the best on the experience and the knowledge that UCM has given me has helped me to push uh, myself and my team together into the domestic market into the international market to where we are today we are present in 25 countries in six uh, con uh, regions uh, globally so it's a big uh, coverage and uh, i will say that uh, based on this uh, we are in a better position to mitigate uh, global uh, recession as what is happening now and uh, we have also widened our service capability into four core competency uh, namely, the operation and maintenance, the EPCC, which is referring to engineering, procurement, uh, construction, and commissioning. Uh, we have embarked and uh, positioned ourselves very strongly into IT solutions. And one of the IT solutions, the uh, frontier technology inside there is what people name it as IR or Industrial Revolution 4.0. And uh, in fact, uh, we have a research team which is looking into how can we upgrade and position ourselves to tie up with what is going on at the moment, people is heading into industrial revolution 5.0. So uh, on top of that, uh, uh, early this year, uh, Cyberdynamic uh, has also able to uh, acquire uh, boutique NC Unimine, New State Malaysia of uh, Computer Science and Engineering. And uh, this, uh, you see, for us, it's very important because uh, one of the things that my management team and my uh, technical team is very, very interested is to uh, pursue uh, real uh, 
research and development which are a need to the actual uh, industrial uh, uh, situations uh, of what the pandemic is having and of course a lot of other peers which we are in contact with. So I will say that uh, uh, all these are uh, to hard work and it is uh, to, uh, quite quite a long journey I would say and I was I, I uh, credit all these things back to the fundamentals and uh, what the uh, Institute of Technology Malaysia has uh, trained me uh, into. So uh, other than that uh, will be uh, things like uh, uh, issues when we go out uh, there will be a few uh, three uh, elements which is very important. Uh, number one, uh, if we want to be a global player and strong domestic, we must have the uh, proven uh, credible threat record in what we are offering. Uh, secondly, we must have the in-house uh, technology and capability. And uh, how Cyberdynamic uh, have this uh, ability and capability is, some of the technology, uh, if we want to develop uh, in-house, it will take a lot of time to do it. So what we have done is we embarked onto a merger and acquisition journey. And I would say, alhamdulillah, uh, through the past uh, three years, we have acquired uh, those uh, technology uh, companies that is required to help Cyberdynamic uh, to be able to compete with other uh, international companies. So we have achieved that at the moment. We are nurturing and we are building and investing into other uh, infrastructure, uh, what we call it the center excellence in different strategic allocations. In fact, one of the very uh, big investments that we put in is in the Pungarang, uh, the repeat uh, area, uh, to serve the entire uh, investment which uh, Petronas and the partners have uh, put in the investment. So the third thing is very important here, the financial strength and capability. Uh, Cyberdynamic has uh, embarked on uh, quite a number of fundraising exercises, whether it is equity uh, in nature or whether it is in uh, debt in nature. Both are important to balance up so that the gearing ratios uh, 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 will be reasonable and acceptable to the uh, industrial perspective. So again, I would like to uh, share here that uh, from an engineer, uh, when the, I became a uh, Entrepreneur or Utawan, uh, ilmu ilmu yang selain daripada engineering juga diperlukan terutama nya apabila ilmu yang melibatkan uh, ilmu yang berkaitan dengan kewangan. And I think uh, I uh, studied the uh, financial uh, uh, knowledge uh, through hands-on and practical ability of the business that I've gone through. And so far, uh, I, I think uh, uh, I'm doing quite okay in that aspect. Uh, from the understanding and uh, what the world global standards uh, related to financing uh, is uh, looking at. But one of the very important uh, things that I would like to share here is uh, to garner uh, the uh, trust of the investment community. Uh, this is where uh, going back to the fundamentals that I mentioned just now, the integrity part of it. Uh, people say that the power corrupts, but I will say that when you are in a position, uh, high level in corporate organization, if there is no fear of uh, uh, to, to the creator, tidak ada rasa ketakutan kepada Allah, tidak ada rasa uh, 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 rasa keimanan bahawa uh, setiap apa yang dilakukan akan dihisap di akhirat nanti. That is where we find out that a lot of uh, scandals of misuse of funding and so on uh, happen. So I would say that in this context, the uh, I mean is a very good uh, record in which uh, whatever we promise to the investor, so far uh, we have managed to deliver it and uh, the company uh, focus and target uh, we have managed to also uh, achieve it, and that actually builds up a stronger confidence in all the uh, funding exercises that we've gone through. And I would say that uh, alhamdulillah, uh, it's not really something that we want to show off. It's just uh, to put a record that we have raised uh, almost up to three, uh, near to four billion uh, ringgit Malaysia over the past uh, 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 three and a half years. And I would say that this is uh, some of the very uh, 
good record uh, to be uh, put uh, as a reference uh, to the uh, corporate world. And all this, I would say that is going back to the strong fundamentals and foundations that UCM has uh, trained and given me uh, after my graduation. So that is uh, on the uh, career experience that I've gone through. So the last part, uh, forward-looking segment. I would say that uh, there are a lot of things that we have learned. Banyak ilmu-ilmu uh, pengurusan yang kita telah mempelajari dan uh, banyak juga teori-teori uh, dan konsep yang telah uh, kita lalui melalui kursus-kursus yang uh, dihadiri. Dan uh, I feel that a lot of it now has to relook into it. Why, why I'm saying this? Uh, kalau kita lihat uh, konsep uh, perancangan, ya, kita kalau kita uh, melalui kursus-kursus uh, yang kita uh, hadiri, uh, we normally will have uh, long-term planning, we have short-term planning, we have mid-term planning, and so on and so forth. And uh, it is quite normal that people will come up uh, with a three years plan, five years plan, ten years plan. But uh, with the existing uh, environment that we are going through, uh, for example, like uh, this uh, pandemic of uh, COVID-19, it comes uh, without uh, any early sign and every, everybody is being caught uh, off end Maknanya kita tidak bersedia lagi untuk menghadapi uh, pandemik uh, COVID-19 ini. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is, uh, if we go back to the theory of the economic cycle of 10 years, uh, by right 2020 uh, should have already passed through uh, more than two years already, and 2020 should be a very, very good year. But uh, it turned out uh, to be what uh, it is now at the moment, So, ianya merupakan suatu kejutan dan uh, segala teori uh, perancangan uh, long term and so on so forth uh, it is very very difficult now. And kalau kita lihat uh, other challenges that is coming in at the moment. Nobody uh, would want to look at uh, uh, the battle uh, for positioning themselves on the economy and political Uh, situation between the uh, United States of America and also China. And uh, we will see that the latest development, China is launching their digital currency uh, within the, the internal uh, state, four states has been uh, mentioned. And uh, with this, uh, the relevance of uh, uh, perks against the US dollar is no more that uh, required. And if this uh, digital currency is also being accepted by other countries uh, in the world, then there will be a big uh, conflict between the U.S. and also uh, China, plus other countries uh, that is supporting China. And if we look at what is going on, all the Western blocs, which normally uh, ally themselves with uh, U.S., uh, now is no more uh, of that kind of mentality. Uh, we can see that the uh, UK, which is the uh, United Kingdom, which is a very close ally to the uh, United States, uh, the uh, Prime Minister has made a very damaging uh, remark and comment on President Trump. So we will see that there are so many things which are uh, unforeseen which is going on, and we are also unclear what will be the directions uh, going to happen in the next few months. With all this uh, pandemic of COVID and so on, coupled up with all this uh, struggle for positioning, I would say that uh, Malaysians and everybody uh, in the world is undergoing a very, very uncertain uh, future. So, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, I strongly believe that as uh, successful uh, individuals, uh, Besides uh, holding back to the asas uh, pengamalan keagamaan yang kita percaya, uh, kita perlu uh, mengamalkan apa yang guru-guru uh, uh, pengurusan uh, uh, sebutkan uh, sebagai walk the talk. Uh, meaning to say that he just has to really go down to the ground, uh, talk to everybody, gather the necessary information, 
then uh, work out a strategy and mitigation plans that need to be uh, carried out. Uh, goal other days, uh, top uh, management, top uh, uh, officers and consists in the office waiting for information just by playing forms and so on to get the information. I strongly believe that those days are gone. Everybody has to go down to the ground to check the information as fast as possible for that meeting to play. So I would say that uh, what will happen to the education system in the new state? I am of the opinion that there must be a serious uh, effort to work out for the gap between the academia so the industrial practitioner has to be uh, has to be worked out uh, quickly because uh, before the industry uh, has the perception that uh, you see it's very uh, very uh, uh, I, I, I would say a very uh, not realistic uh, 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 platform because uh, everything is talking about theory and the applications and the alignment of that theory into the real uh, practical uh, world uh, is still uh, people grabbing uh, to understand. So by reducing down the gap between the academia and also the industry practitioner, this is a subject which is uh, very important. And uh, so that I need as uh, it, uh, it, a party which is on the other side, which uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, 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 involve ourselves into the industry uh, world we don't really understand what are the lacking and what needs the real R&D team to come in to resolve those issues and to add value to the engineering solutions that we are uh, looking for. So I open it up uh, for further uh, Q&A and these are my thoughts uh, which I would like to share. And I will say that uh, uh, we are facing a different uh, uh, world at the moment. Uh, during the time, during my time, uh, we still have a very high respect to elderly people. Uh, we still have very high respect to people who are uh, more uh, older than us. But if you look uh, at what is going on today, uh, the younger generation uh, does not uh, really buy in the thought and the thinking of the older generation. So that is where we can see the debate ongoing, the millennials, uh, the uh, Gen Y, and then the boomers. Yeah? So, macam orang kita ni yang dah masuk uh, above uh, 50 uh, years old are considered as the boomers. So the millennials and also the Gen Y, they have their different way and thought. But whatever it is, uh, I think uh, everybody uh, has their uh, pro and cons and uh, it has to combine together to strengthen and move forward uh, to become a successful community or a successful uh, nation as a uh, overall. So, uh, uh, Dr. Prof. Uh, Rafiq, I think uh, those are some of the thoughts and some of the points that I would like to uh, share. And I would like to uh, pass back uh, the button back to you uh, to coordinate some uh, questions and answers. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, terima kasih Datuk. Thank you Datuk for your sharing uh, for sharing your inspiring experience um, as UTM alumni with us today. Okay, now I'm open to the floor for any um, further questions to your Datuk. Datuk. Okay, hold on. Um, we are going to have um, the questions uh, at the bottom of the screen. Okay, I have a question from Komen. Assalamualaikum Datuk from Nasrah Kamaruzaman. How did you manage to find passion in business and could you please advise how can we lecture involve actively in solving industrial problem? Can you hear me Datuk? Is that yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, for, for my understanding is uh, the, the, the way I look at it is there is still a mistrust between the two components, eh? the industry 
and also the academia. Because uh, the the argument is sometimes what the require uh, the the needs of the industry uh, could not be really uh, understood by the academia, and as a result of that. The academia cannot come out to give uh, a real solution to this uh, industry. And the industry is in a very desperate uh, situation. Desperate in the sense that time is its essence. Masa itu adalah amat penting. And uh, they have to solve the problem so that uh, the KPI, key performance indicator, uh, can be achieved. What it means here is, uh, in terms of efficiency and the productivity, uh, it has to uh, improve and uh, bring the necessary uh, profitability to the uh, company. So because of that, that is why I'm saying that uh, the gap between the academia and also the industry, uh, uh, the practicing industry need to be narrow. And uh, this uh, needs uh, uh, some organization uh, to really uh, work this thing out. And I would like to uh, share here that, uh, uh, for example, like uh, IMM, Institute of Materials of Malaysia, is moving this kind of understanding and uh, inside there there are academicians and inside there there are industrial uh, practitioners so both parties are in there and trying to work out the solution but that is not enough i would say it has to go beyond that so to answer uh, that question is um, there must be an element uh, in which uh, the you see uh, quickly come out uh, with some uh, real uh, industrial uh, problems and uh, use the intellectual uh, brain of all the lecturers and researchers to solve the problem and uh, use it as a reference to build up the level of confidence in the uh, industrial practicing community. And I would say that this, 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 this is uh, happening already. For example, like uh, we have worked with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, UTM also, uh, uh, Professor Apozi, in terms of uh, the uh, water uh, management uh, 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 technology. And uh, unfortunately, because of uh, quite a number of changes in the uh, government, uh, the actual uh, conclusions uh, has not been rolled up, but uh, we are still working very hard so that it can uh, uh, be closed up and it can roll up in terms of the practicality, a genuine uh, collaboration between the industry and also the uh, academy. So all these things uh, need to be uh, intensified, uh, and I strongly believe that at the end of the day, uh, we will be able to uh, build up a more uh, credible uh, collaboration between the both parties. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Datuk. Um, next question uh, from uh, Professor Zaki Kamsa. Tanya Datuk, what made you diverging your business from hardcore engineering into fun and entertainment such as the virtual reality park in Sarawak? Well, I would say that it is uh, based on the expectations of uh, our uh, shareholder. Like a listed uh, company, uh, we have varieties of uh, shareholders within uh, the uh, company. And uh, the bottom line is uh, the company has to uh, be making uh, sufficient profit so that we can return back uh, in terms of the dividends, in terms of uh, the committed uh, promise uh, that we have uh, put forward to them. So as an organization, uh, every year we are looking at the growth of uh, possible them in the set, uh, context of the dynamic. We are looking at the growth of 15 to 20 percent, uh, both uh, top and bottom line. And Malanya, in terms of the sales revenue, uh, in terms of profitability, both uh, is uh, in the range of 15 to 20 percent. 15 to 20 percent so for a company of what server dynamic is at the moment uh, for example like 2019 we have a revenue of uh, measure 10 percent of it meaning to say that uh, is uh, another 400 million in 2020 and then uh, uh, another five percent is 15 percent and that's 100 so meaning to say that 
we need to have a gross additional sales of 600 million ringgit per annum. Eh? So based on that, the company has to look into how to uh, achieve this kind of growth. So from the best estimations uh, in terms of our strategic planning is the IT solutions will have two uh, areas that we are looking at. The institutional customer and also the retail uh, customer. The retail consumer uh, customer is where the entire population is, which is uh, talking about 7.7 .7 billion population uh, globally. So if you can set certain percentage of it, that will be very good. It will help in terms of the growth of uh, suburban animals. So this uh, digital visual part, we are looking at uh, using this uh, technology uh, to bring uh, amusement uh, uh, to the uh, retail uh, community because uh, they'll be visiting and they have to pay. And on top of that, uh, we want to demonstrate it to people that seeing is believing. Uh, how this uh, frontier technology can be used as a uh, means uh, to show that the consumer can gain uh, from it as well. And uh, in fact, uh, the digital visual part is more than what people look at on all those uh, entertainment uh, 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 aspects. Uh, it also has what we call it as the innovation lab combined together. This is where the startup company comes in. This is where the incubator company comes in. So we are preparing a platform for these people uh, to be uh, introduced into all these uh, technologies. And then, of course, uh, there will be other things like uh, hologram uh, theatre. Uh, it's a very uh, latest set of art advanced uh, technology. And uh, all these are evidence of technology which we want to show to the, uh, to the public uh, so that they can really uh, share. But again, like what I mentioned, uh, uh, there are limitations to everything that we are doing. What we are doing is uh, uh, working out a solution which people can appreciate technology, tapi tidak masuk kepada tahap yang melalaikan masyarakat. So that, that, that is what we are doing and that is why we enter into all this uh, digital digital part. Okay, thank you, Dr. Next question from Dr. Rosalind Abdullah. How Serba Dynamic Coop handle during COVID-19? Uh, we are uh, an organization, sometimes people say that dalam istilah lemen, orang kata uh, Serba Dynamic ni macam orang gila. <laughs> why, why, why they said that? Because in the COVID situation, in the uh, or if uh, downturn, we go out to the market to ask for money. We went out uh, for a placement exercise uh, to seek for funds so that uh, we can get additional uh, funding uh, to overcome uh, the, the, the possibility of uh, financial uh, shortage during the COVID uh, period, the pandemic COVID-19. You know, say, Alhamdulillah, uh it's uh it, it's a very good experience and like what i mentioned uh, uh if we have the credibility to explain and justify uh why we need all these things and we have the track record that we did not cheat people for the investment that they put in uh there is sufficient enough liquidity in the market so uh, uh based on what we have achieved uh i will say that that concludes uh, the point that I would like to uh, touch on. So now it goes back to the, uh, uh, the question from Dr. Uh, Roslan uh, regarding uh, this uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, I will have to admit that uh, if it's just a uh, normal economic cycle recession, uh, so when I make uh, it's not really that worry because we have gone through the past two uh, circle of recession and uh, we have managed to uh, position and get out of that situation uh, without much hurt. Yeah? But this COVID-19 is slightly different. Slightly different in the sense that uh, the MCO, Kegerakan uh, Manusia Yang Terbatas ini, tidak dapat uh, membantu di dalam pelaksanaan projek-projek sebenarnya yang ada di 
negara-negara yang uh, berbeza di rantau dunia. But however, we are lucky in the sense that, for example, like those uh, contracts that we have in Africa, in Tanzania, Uzbekistan, uh, in uh, Middle East, uh, all the six uh, countries over there, we have uh, sufficient uh, workers stationed over there. And uh, even though now uh, a lot of countries uh, cannot go in, cannot go out, uh, the team is already there to uh, execute the respective uh, contracts. So I uh, was, uh, and, and myself and my management team was making a statement uh, to the uh, public saying that uh, if the MCO in the context of Malaysia is listed uh, uh, by end of April, and I would say that we are lucky, uh, it was listed, but of course there is still uh, limitations in terms of movement, but it's not so bad. Uh, we can uh, more or less uh, start back our work project and so on. And hopefully, other states will, uh, will 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 be able to be lifted, meaning to say that uh, cross border. Karena kalau mana masuk ke East Malaysia susah sikit, sebab you need to be quarantined and all this kind of thing. So it's not that uh, helping in terms of uh, execution of the project that we have in hand at the moment. But whatever it is, it is moving, and uh, I would say that uh, entering masuk ke dalam bulan uh, June. Uh, there is a lot of catch up that uh, we need to do lah. Supaya lambatkan uh, planning yang kita sepatutnya lakukan uh, dalam bulan Mei, uh, kita kena uh, persemaskan di dalam bulan Jun. Very high possibility we are going to work uh, 24 hours, breaking into a different shift. So the same thing applies to uh, other countries. Okay, thank you, Datuk. Um, we are we have only nine minutes before five o'clock. Um, the question from Aina Atira: How should students be prepared for working life in this pandemic? I would say that uh, first, uh, personality uh, brought up is very important. So what I mean here is. Uh, of course, uh, there will be still a potential company uh, which will be looking for uh, graduates. Uh, some are putting it up on the basis of uh, corporate social responsibility because you cannot uh, totally uh, ban uh, from recruiting uh, graduates because uh, in the corporate organization, we have such a plan we have corporate uh, social responsibility and so on and so forth. So there will definitely be openings uh, for uh, regret. And uh, what is very important for me is how you present yourself when you go for the qualifying interview. So uh, if, uh, if you have the capability to communicate and uh, you have the ability to uh, answer the questions that you forwarded, I strongly believe that uh, that will help. It is uh, when, when when an employer look for uh, employees, it is not uh, per se looking at the results, whether you are first class, you are second class, upper or you are second class, lower. It uh, actually uh, goes back to a lot of factors. Yeah. For example, if I interview a candidate, the first thing is I would like to look at uh, uh, the maturity of how uh, they present themselves and also how they are able to uh, justify and uh, give a suggestion to a problem that is given to them. So what I'm trying to say is communication skills is very important. Uh, think out of the box, innovation capability is very important. And then uh, other than that, uh, it's uh, based on the how well uh, uh, we are able to uh, answer the necessary uh, question that is uh, given. So don't be uh, too uh, uh, down. Uh, it seems that uh, this uh, pandemic is going to uh, wash out uh, all the uh, potential employment and so on. Uh, life is uh, going back to normal, uh, inshallah. And the uh, economy is going to go back to normal. Uh, but of course, uh, everybody has to play the role, 
And uh, I would say uh, political stability is also very, very important. I hope that uh, those uh, who are uh, hearing this, especially the aspiring politicians and so on, uh, please uh, consider other factors, uh, the, the importance of the rakyat, which is priority at the moment, reduce down uh, more uh, serious uh, negative politicking. Uh, hopefully, let's join them to build up uh, our nation, Malaysia. Okay, Datuk. Thank you so much. We have a lot of questions for today, but now this is the last question for you, Datuk, uh, from our Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Zinmanan. Uh, this is the questions. Jack Ma just said that for business in 2020, it is just sufficient to survive. If you survive, you are already making profit. In your view, Datuk, what are the ways for businesses to survive in the threatening major recession due to COVID-19? What advice would you give students as well on how to secure employment, be it employed, self-employed, and starting up business in the ruthlessly challenging near future? It is of obvious that cyber dynamic is also affected. The questions from Professor Zain. Very good uh, question, very good challenging uh, uh, to uh, give uh, uh, an answer which can please people. If, if I talk to my uh, analysts and if I talk to my investor that it will only be the best that we can achieve is, uh, is uh, more or less uh, the same as last year, then I think uh, they will show show us a very tower face. Eh? Uh, but whatever it is, uh, for us in Subodamic, uh, we have already worked out a business model uh, which has taken into the issues of sustainability. Uh, sustainability is very important uh, in terms of uh, business. Uh, but uh, besides the sustainability, of course, uh, the investor, the shareholders, they will look at growth uh, every year. So in, in our context, uh, we are making a statement that upon discussion with my management team, uh, we will have uh, a growth uh, for 2020. The normal growth that we are looking at is uh, 15 to 20%. If we cannot achieve 15%, uh, we will still be able to look at a growth of 10%. Uh, we are working very hard on that, and we believe that it can be done. And how can that be achieved goes back to the fundamental business model when we have uh, uh, set up the company. Like what I mentioned, uh, Superdynamic uh, is a company that is set up based on the very strong uh, fundamentals way back more than 24 years ago. It is not a company that is set up based on political uh, connections and uh, uh, cables that we have with people in the region. Is a company set up with proven track records? Uh, is a company set up with uh, uh, proven technology that we have in place? And we also uh, collaborate with a lot of other enterprises which have technology. And we also collaborate with uh, other local industries, uh, one of which is Institute Technology Malaysia. And we have even uh, have uh, overseas collaboration up to uh, uh, UC. Uh, in the uh, Stanford Institute in the California. And uh, uh, based on all these things, we are still optimistic that uh, we should, uh, inshallah, be able to overcome the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. The details, I think we need to sit down to, 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 to lay out, uh, to support my statement. Okay, thank you, Datuk. We are running out of time for now. Um, without further ado, Murni pass over to yang berbahagia Datuk Dekan for closing. Selamat berbuka puasa, Datuk. Uh, uh, yang berbahagia Datuk Dekan, um, over to you. Uh, okay, uh, Datuk Karim, uh, a very big thank you from uh, from us at the Faculty of Engineering for spending some of your precious time. Uh, with us today. I'm sure that uh, you're extremely busy with your daily commitments. We at UTM are very honored to have our own alumni leading such an extremely successful business venture. And we hope that we will have more collaborations with you and uh, Cerber Dynamic in the future. Uh, and to all of you watching this webinar, thank you, thank you very much. 
we have arranged uh, many more CEOs uh, to share their experience in our effort to build the nations post COVID-19. Uh, so tomorrow we have we will have uh, Dr. Rizal from uh, Nano Malaysia, CEO of Nano Malaysia, to share his experience with us. Uh, don't forget to like, uh, like, and comment, and share. Yeah, like, comment, and share. Yeah, our. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, again, uh, Datuk Karim. Yeah, terima kasih banyak, uh, Datuk Puan. Look forward to see you in person. Ah, insyaAllah, insyaAllah. InsyaAllah. Yeah. Terima kasih semua. Sama-sama. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.